Today, tomorrow and beyond, this house must show hope, decency, and above all, leadership. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> all right. So see you, see you for the party. Yeah. Yeah. Simon, fantastic to meet you. I want to start with your childhood. What was your early life like? Happy, boisterous, <laughs> uh, a little bit crazy. We made, we made the, our estate at Leicester City was our playground. But looking back, I, I, I look back very fondly. I mean, it wasn't without its challenges on many levels, but uh, I look back very, very fondly. Where did studying enter the picture? Mm, well, it didn't at school so much, but uh, I, on my third or fourth job as a, I think I was a salesman for Rank Films, um, I, I kind of felt that studying was really, really important, that would make me a fuller person. And so I gave up my job and did an access course, uh, which was learning how to learn, and then a, a modular degree studying politics, history, Spanish, and went to Latin America to study and to, to read um, Latin American literature. And we studied Latin American politics at the time in the 90s. Latin America was on fire, civil wars everywhere. So I wasn't just reading it, I was living it in places like Colombia, Guatemala, El Salvador. And uh, when, when you see people prepared to die for their cause. It moves you in a particular way to say, what's my role? What excuse do I have? So Simon, tell me then about Operation Black Vote. Yes, well, I, I understood the lived experience of being a black man in predominantly a white world that um, is racially unequal. So I set about looking at, actually, we might feel powerless, but if you do the numbers, elections are won and lost in small margins. If you could do the numbers, you might find something that gives us power. And I did. I found that we could be, in many elections, the difference between who gets the, the keys to Downing Street and who doesn't. It was a game changer. When we started, there were four black, Asian and minority ethnic MPs. Now there are 64. And it's because political parties said, say, uh, we want the black and brown vote. So we've got to have representation. We've got to have policies that deal with inequality. So I think we started something pretty special. So with all those experiences under your belt, how did you then become a member of the House of Lords? I'm in my office in Bethnal Green, and uh, the phone rings. Now, I've been getting a lot of racist hate calls at this time. And um, so I pick up the phone, and the person says, can I speak to Simon Woolley? And, and I said, uh, quite gruffly, uh, depends, who is it? And uh, the person said, oh, Gavin Barwell. Gavin Barwell was Theresa May's chief of staff, so her number one guy. And I said, Gar Gavin. Oh, sorry, man, I've been getting racist calls. I'm a bit guarded. Um, and he said, Simon, this really isn't a horrible call. <laughs> he, said, he said just the opposite. He said that um, the Prime Minister's thought long and hard about who she'd like to ennoble, put into the House of Lords, and she'd like to uh, appoint you. And the Prime Minister wanted me there to speak up and speak out and to inspire others. How did you become the principal of Homerton College, the first black man, I believe, to head an Oxbridge right. college? How did that happen? Uh, right place, right time. I think the whole Black Lives Matter movement said, look at our institutions, where's the talent? And again, the backstory allows you to be in the spotlight this person's talented. We're looking for something that brings a new perspective to learning, to
to inspire him. Uh, and so they asked me, they, I got head hunted. It took nine months for the, from start to finish, um, the, the process of being interviewed. I think I had 20 interviews, including by the students. And then there's an election. And I won it hands down. Yes. <laughs> It is, for me, an incredible journey that a kid from a council estate should then become the first black man to head at Oxbridge College. And, and it's not supposed to be, but I'm here because I was headhunted. And um, they think I bring something different, something fresh. Yeah, if we're not there, then we're, we're not on the radar. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, Mum, this is where I want to go. And she's like, are you sure? You know, in a role like this, I think I bring my lived experience, working class, from a minority background. I can give students from, from all those backgrounds a sense of great belonging, uh, that they can thrive, that they can excel. But also to a wider world too. This is what diversity looks like. Uh, this is how we, we showcase ourselves to a wider world. It says, we are doing something very special, and uh, what's not to like about that? Balancing my life as a parliamentarian and as a head of Ombudsman is extremely difficult. I have to prioritise. Uh, in, in regards to parliamentary work, what are the pieces of legislation that I most care about? Uh, social injustice, education, uh, immigration. Uh, I can't do everything. I, I know that. But it, those elements that I, I do engage with, I, I want to do well. This is my full-time job. What are you most proud of, Simon? <laughs> well, hand on heart, being a dad. Being a present dad. Um, and using that energy of, of being a parent um, to help drive my desire for a better world. I know I've been bestowed honours now, and, you know, but for many years it was, un it was a thankless job, completely thankless. But in reality, how many people get up in the morning, every morning, waking up thinking, how am I going to change the world? I mean, that's, that's a gift. So I'm proud that I can do that. And I hope uh, that in a number of quarters, it can make a difference. <laughs>